So when I went down to Boston, I had no idea what the marathon was all about. And sometimes ignorance is bliss because I had no idea what the Heartbreak Hills were all about. I really didn't know how far 26.2 miles was when uh, stretched out from point A from point B. So I started the race and I just kept going. I didn't see the course before running and um, I figured what I didn't know wouldn't hurt me and I tended to run faster than I might have have otherwise because I wanted to know what was around the next bend. And surprisingly, I wound up winning that race. I passed the uh, favorite on Heartbreak Hill. And after I passed this woman, Patty Catalano, I asked the gentleman next to me, I said, so where are these so-called Heartbreak Hills? <laughs> and he looked at me like I was crazy and said, lady, you just passed them. <laughs> So all of a sudden I thought, hmm, I like this game of marathon. <laughs> so it was outpatient surgery and I woke up in a hospital room. So I immediately thought that I was out of the Olympic trials because it was ambulatory care that I was supposed to be um, administered. The ambulatory care unit was supposed to release me. And the surgeon walked in a few minutes after I woke up and he said, are you surprised to be in this room? And I said, I guess the Olympics are out and I'll have to look for the next event. He said, well, not exactly, he said, but your reputation has preceded you. And I knew if I let you out, you'd go test your knee immediately. <laughs> and I said, well, you're exactly right. He said, I want you to stay here for 48 hours and then I'll let you out. And then you can do whatever you've done and well, please. Well, Long story short, I was released, I did test the knee, and believe it or not, it was functioning fully, and I was bound and determined to get to Olympia to the first uh, marathon trials for women. And as I got to the starting line, um, a lot of my competitors said, oh, it's too bad you have to be here to run this race, your time is so much faster than ours, why don't they just give you a, a bye and, and let you compete you know, in three months in the Olympics? And, uh, you know, I sort of was thinking the same thing. <laughs> but we don't try to cross politics with Olympics. And I knew that it wouldn't be fair to my competitors if I was given a bye and they had to um, compete. And I also thought that if I didn't compete well at the Olympics and had this bye, it would be a very hard situation to uh, handle. So I went to the starting line and uh, just ran my own race. And I didn't care what the pace was, I didn't care what my competition was doing, and oftentimes I'm asked by um, the press what my plan is for a particular race and do I have a strategy in mind and I also always say I'm gonna run my own race because you never know what you can do until the day of a race. And as in anything in life, you can't play into the hands of any competitors, you have to stand your own, believe in yourself, and give it the best effort you can on that particular day. And that's exactly what I did at the Olympic trials. And I, I made it to the Olympics, I won the race. If anybody had come on me in the last six miles of the marathon, every runner in the field would have come by me because I had nothing left. I gave it everything I had that day.